In 2005, a poor unfortunate game studio was tasked with porting four classic arcade games to the GBA in the form of two multi-carts. Marble Madness and Clax on one, and Rampage and Paperboy on the other. Releasing barely half a month apart from each other, according to developers who worked on the ports, they were only given two months to do all of it. Four games in two months effectively only gave them a fortnight to work on each. So what does that even look like? Is it even possible to port a game in such a short amount of time? Let's find out. Welcome to Port Patrol, the show where we look at weird and interesting ports and spin-offs of our favourite games. You know, like Clax. Everyone's favourite. And today we are taking a look at some GBA arcade games ported in just two weeks. Okay, so first off, let's get a little context behind these multi-carts before diving headfirst into the actual games. Published by DSi Games, who are somehow both the publishers behind some of the worst games to ever hit the GBA, but then also Smashing Drive, literally the best game ever to hit any console ever made. These multi-carts are just two in a massive series of multi-carts they shoveled onto the system, and from what I can see, none of the others really fared much better. Most releases featured two games, but there were others with three, and even some that had four games on one cart. Like, those poor developers. Though, I guess if you really felt like experiencing the worst versions of Monopoly or Battleship you've ever played in your entire life, then at least Destination Games, I don't know how you get DSi out of that, has your back. Hey guys, present day Lex here, just to let you know the past version of myself you are listening to is an absolute idiot. I don't know why she wrote down that their name was Destination Games, uh, it literally isn't. Uh, the name DSi Games making a lot more sense when you consider they're actually called Destination Software Inc. For the sake of this video though, to stop it spiralling out of control, like a lot of my ones recently have seen to. We are only focusing on these two carts, developed by Frame Studios, who were clearly very stretched to work on these projects. Looking at the credits of the games, it looks like they had half their team work on one collection, and the other half work on the other, meaning that each individual game on the carts only really had one programmer working on it. In fact, they were so thinly spread that they even had to bring in help from another game studio, Seventh Sense, to help with the Rampage Paperboy cart. Clearly another stretched studio, as even with them working on the collection, the credits list is still somehow shorter than the first cart. I just wanted to spend a little time laying down the groundwork for how these ports were made, because it really helps explain why the ports are how they are, which is bad. A uh, little spoiler alert there. But also to make it very clear, it is obviously not the developers' faults they turned out this way, uh, nor am I making fun of them when I'm poking fun at the games in the collection either. With all that out of the way though, let's dive in. Marble Madness is a classic 1984 arcade game where you play as a marble. There's really no better way to describe it than that. Kinda like a proto Super Monkey Ball, you need to navigate your marble past a variety of obstacles and stage hazards through a jaw-dropping amount of levels. If you're impressed by very small numbers that is, because that number is six. Six whole levels. I'm going to be talking about the game for longer than it takes to finish it. You might expect then, given the length of the game, if that's even the right word for a game this short, that it would be one of the better ported games in this collection of four. You would be wrong. If anything, Marble Madness on the GBA 
probably drew the shorter stick of them all. There isn't any aspect of this game that made the transition unscathed and unshitted. The controls in particular being a prime example of where the game was scathed and shitted. The marble is incredibly stiff to control, hard to get going, and even harder to steer, so you do have to admire the optimism of including a button to make it roll even faster, cause every time I used it, it just made me uncontrollably shoot off the edge of a cliff. Surprisingly though, the terrible controls of the game don't actually become that big of a problem, I was still able to beat the game on my first attempt. Though that's not because I'm a totally epic gamer who can adapt to awful controls instantly, because I am definitely not that, despite how much I wish I was considering the type of shit I play on this channel. In actual fact, the terrible controls don't hurt the game, because almost all the obstacles you need to avoid have been removed. Nearly every stage hazard and enemy in the game is absent here, I legitimately only remember the slimes and like one slinky looking thing, leaving large parts of certain levels completely barren and devoid of anything at all. There's meant to be a huge wave here, making this an obstacle to avoid. It's just a flat bit of ground now. I guess considering how the game controls, it's almost a blessing in disguise. You barely even have to stress at all about navigating the marble around the levels now, Though this obviously isn't me praising the game for doing this, and it's also very obviously a We only have two weeks to make this game, oh god, oh fuck, get it out, go go go, thing, and not a consideration they made to accommodate the new controls, and nothing makes this clearer than the levels themselves. You're probably wondering by now why I'm only showing footage of the first three levels in the game when I said I finished all of it, and that's because the rest of the levels are missing too. Half the levels missing from a game that you could already beat in five minutes, I ended up having to play through it like eight times just to get enough footage to cover this part of the video, and even then I can already tell writing this I'm going to end up reusing some parts. I'm sorry, I refuse to play it a ninth. Shoot me. Rubbing salt into that wound is also the fact the first level is just a tutorial telling you how to play the game, which barely even counts, so really you're only left with two actual levels to play on, which, like I said, are even then half finished. And yeah, the game ends as abruptly as it sounds. You don't even get a fancy high score screen or anything like that, just the words game over plastered on the screen in silence as it boots you back to the title screen. Like, what kind of way is that to end anything? For what it's worth though, Clax is pretty good. As someone who had both never played or even heard of Clax before making this video, for a first impression considering the absolute state of Marble Madness, it's actually surprisingly fun. You can tell which of these games got the most care and attention here. It's a puzzle game where different coloured blocks come at you, kinda like Guitar Hero, I guess, and you gotta collect them on your little paddle and drop them down here, lining them up in lines to make them disappear. Uh, I, I did an awful job of explaining it, and I'm not even really that good at it. I kept trying to trick shot the blocks back up the board to try and get them stacked on my paddle in a better order, uh, but messed up catching it again so many times. But for what it's worth, as someone who has never played another version of Clax and was terrible at this one, the GBA port actually seems pretty good. And if my opinion isn't worth all that much, then at least everyone on the internet seems to agree with me. You know, not to stroke my ego too much or anything, but I I'm basically always right about everything. I really don't have much else to say about it. It is what it is, you know? On your bike and all that, as we say in England. <laughs> Thank you.
Paperboy feels like a game specifically made to spite me, combining two things I was already tired of doing when I was a kid, having a paper round and being a boy. Well, that's a lie, I can't even ride a bike so I never actually had a paper round, but if it's anything like having one in the game, I can safely say I dodged that bullet. Originally an arcade game, that's true of all of them in this video, why did I write that down? And releasing on just about every console ever known to mankind, but being objectively worse than the original because it didn't come with a handlebar controller which is the shit. Despite the incredibly unexciting sounding premise, Paperboy is a classic, and honestly the only game in this collection of four I had any exposure to before working on this video. I had Paperboy 2 on the Super Nintendo as a kid, and it was fun. Hard and frustrating at times, and a little repetitive, but still fun. Deliver newspapers to your subscribers and vandalise the houses of those who aren't. It was tough as nails with loads of obstacles to avoid, and wacky slapstick interactions to be had, like dropping the car on someone who's working underneath, killing them instantly. You know, it's, it's, it's all a bit of a laugh like that. Paperboy 1 I'm even worse at, and I'm even, even worse at it on the GBA version. Now, there's a lot going on here that's wrong, tempting me to even go as far to say that it might actually be worse than Marble Madness was. Immediately the most frustrating thing is how it plays. You don't actually ride in a straight line in this version of the game for some reason. Instead, you're constantly veering off into the road as if there's a comically oversized magnet just off screen waiting to pull you into oncoming traffic. You'll be spending most of your mental capacity playing this game, just nursing the D-pad to ensure you don't get slammed by a car, let alone even begin starting to think about lining yourself up to deliver newspapers, which is an ordeal in and of itself because of the wonky hitboxes everything has. Wonky hitboxes and the GBA equivalent of Joy-Con Drift, in a game which requires insane levels of precision from the player, sounds like a recipe for a really fun time to me, I don't know about anyone else here. I found myself constantly crashing into obstacles it really looked like I should have been able to clear, and post boxes would often be obscured by other objects, making it near impossible to deliver to some houses. For most of my playtime, I couldn't even tell if I was even doing the right thing. I, I knew logically in my head that I should be delivering the papers to the post boxes, but the graphics have been scaled and compressed down so much what was obviously a target in the original game it looked like, to me, a no entry sign or something like that, like, like I was losing points or something. Especially not helping is the digital- Especially not helping is the digit Especially not helping is the digit- Oh my god. <laughs> Especially not helping are the digitised voices that play whenever something happens in the game, like delivering a newspaper or falling off your bike. They just sometimes play the wrong voice lines, meaning that the paperboy was apologising whenever I delivered a newspaper. Add on top of all of this, how repetitive paperboy is in the first place, even when it is good and horrendously out of tune, terrible sounding music, and now that I've said it all out loud, I think you definitely have here the worst of this collection of four. I suppose, to its credit, compared to Marble Madness, it is a complete game with all three difficulties, and you could technically finish it and not get booted to the title screen halfway through, though I would be very, very surprised if anyone ever actually managed to do it. Rampage. Last but not least in this collection we have Rampage, which feels like a very bizarre game to have packaged in with Paperboy, but what do I know? It's very obvious that with these collections they prioritised one game in each to have the most effort put in. You know, better to have one good game and one bad than have both of them suck I guess, 
and Rampage is definitely the better of the two here, though I'm not sure I'd really call it good. Right, so that kind of ruined the entire sentence I just said, didn't it? It's fine. Hampered in the ways you'd expect. The graphics are horribly compressed and squished, frames of animation are missing, making the game feel sloppier to play, the sound is pretty terrible. But despite how incredibly simple it is, it's still quite a bit of fun to turn off your brain and go apeshit destroying cities. Especially after playing Paperboy, which required your brain be switched on like a neurosurgeon to have any chance of avoiding all the crap it would throw at you. Probably the biggest sin the port commits is that, as a game originally well known for featuring free player co-op, this port is strictly single player only. Now, on the one hand, Duh. Obviously. Like, even if this was a full budget actual release, I would still be very surprised if it had free player co-op. But apparently it wasn't expected by the people in charge of the box art. Uh, I, I guess someone forgot to send them a memo or something. The front of the box just using a screenshot of the arcade version with free player slots along the top. Oops. It also doesn't keep track of high score or anything like that, which is also true of the other ports, but you definitely feel it most here, where getting a high score feels much more like the main objective of the game compared to the others, where it felt more like getting through as many levels as you could. All I'm saying is, no one is playing through Rampage's 128 levels for the level variety. I played it for a bit and had my fun, but ultimately it is an incredibly simple and repetitive game. All you really do is button mash to destroy buildings, and all the levels are basically the exact same thing. It overstays its welcome very quickly, which makes it even more of a shame it's missing multiplayer to help stretch out a bit more enjoyment. Of the two games to prioritise on this cart, I think they definitely bet on the wrong one. I would have much preferred a decent version of Paperboy over this. So, um, those were the games, I guess. I suppose the moral of the story is you need to give people more than two weeks to develop a video game to a high standard, uh, but I also think that's a moral that kinda went without saying. Again, maybe someone just forgot to give DSi games the memo. Given the everything surrounding these games and how they were made, it's very hard to imagine them coming out in any better state than this. These probably really were the best they could be, and the developers absolutely deserve full credit for that. Marble Madness is probably the exception, uh, seeing that every other game in this collection of four made the port across largely complete, it really stands out as the black sheep here, missing so much content, stinging even more due to how short the game was in the first place. And sure, Paperboy wasn't much better, in fact it was probably worse, but at least it has everything in it. You're not just cycling down an empty street for the entire game, even if that would have been preferable with how it plays. I really don't understand why Frame Studios were given such a short time frame to work on these ports. Like, I highly doubt that the public was clamouring for them, smashing down their front doors demanding it or anything like that. They really didn't have to come out literally half a month apart from each other. They should have had more time, that way they could have had four ports that everyone liked and would have bought, rather than four that immediately got dumpstered on the moment it was shoved out the door. After this, DSi games would continue to exist for a couple of years, again, mostly shoveling out utter dross onto the GBA, DS and Wii, before being bought up in 2007, and shutting their doors in 2013. And Frame Studios would seemingly fizzle out into obscurity, their name basically making it impossible to research them without being bombarded by links to picture frame companies. Their IGN page at least lists them making a few more games after this, such as Eminem Break'em on the DS in 2007, but nothing really after that unless you include this typo saying they made a game in 2017. On the Wii. 
but a bit of their legacy still lives on, that 2017 typo actually referring to the 2017 Vita port of a game called Jam Smashers, which itself is a port of a 2011 Wii and 3DS remake of a GBA game that Frame Studios made all the way back in 2003. So it's nice that a little bit of their legacy still lives on, uh, just maybe don't Google Gem Smashers Review and keep this a happy ending. <laughs>